Hello, you're watching People's Dispatch, and today we're going to Tunisia, which is going to see a major constitutional referendum on the 25th of July. Now, we've talked about this issue before as well. Last year, President Kais Said assumed executive power, took a lot of decisions that centralized a lot of power in his hands, and then promised that he would offer a new constitution. Now, this constitution was supposed to replace the one which was introduced after the Arab Spring protests of 2011, and this draft is out. Political parties, trade unions, among a number of other sectors, not at all happy with this draft because they say it actually gives even more power to the president. To talk more about this, we have with us Fadil Ali Riza, the founder and editor-in-chief of Mishkal. Fadil, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Fadil, could you first start telling us a bit about this uh, draft constitution which will be put to vote on the 25th? What are some of the key characteristics of this document? Sure. Uh, the main sort of thrust is that it will be basically uh, doing away with what had been a divided executive between a president and a prime minister. Uh, and it will be giving all of the power to, to the presidency. Um, in, in, we'll see that there is still a parliament, uh, but it seems that its powers are uh, vastly reduced. Um, there seems to be very few checks on the presidency. Uh, actually, uh, one of the uh, advisors who was involved in the drafting of this version, this draft, uh, has given an interview uh, in, where he's actually condemned the final version. He says that the version he presented to the president, all of the checks that were there have been reduced and it's not, no longer just a hyper-presidential system, but uh, he says that it really is a, a dictatorial system. And that's uh, it's one of the criticisms we've seen from many political parties. Um, that said, uh, human rights are still protected within the, uh, the, the new um, uh, draft constitution, um, but many of the institutions and institutional checks that were there to really guarantee them seem to have been taken away. Uh, and that seems to be the, the main concern that we've heard from, from human rights activists. Uh, when it comes to, to the union, the, union uh, the main union, the, the UGTT, uh, they've decided not to take an official stance on the, the referendum that's going to be happening on the constitution. However, uh, when you talk to some of the, the top leaders in the union, uh, they've said that they personally are not happy with the draft. And um, we've seen criticism of it. We've also seen uh, other institutions uh, uh, basically coming out and saying, we'd like to do a, a rewrite. We think that the writing process was, was very non-inclusive. Um, and we were, they're very concerned about the, the results of the, the constitution uh, drafting process, which is now before a referendum, only a few weeks after it's been released, after only a few weeks after it's been, uh, we've, we've had the text to really go over. Right, Father, actually, when we last had mentioned that this constitution, there was supposed to be this process of public consultation, inputs and all that, but you had also indicated that there was actually not too much enthusiasm among the people in terms of participation. So was that, uh, was that vindicated over time? Has there, was there really any public involvement at all or was it just a small coterie of people framing it? Well, there was an online consultation. Uh, the online consultation was um, a multiple choice. So uh, it's a bit limited in terms of uh, how much that can actually go into to, to drafting the constitution. There doesn't seem to be uh, uh, an indication or sort of a methodology clearly that sort of links the online consultation to the, the draft that we have now. And in fact, uh, the draft that was presented to the president was changed just a two days, two or three days afterwards uh, by the committee that had actually done the drafting. Uh, now that said, there was very low participation in the online consultation. Uh, the drafting uh, committee that, that was working on it for, for weeks before it was presented to the president uh, had very little transparency. They, uh, they, they took very few questions from, from the press. Uh, these were sort of uh, uh, meetings that uh, really very few Tunisians had any sort of say over. So that certainly is one of the concerns of people who, are, who have said that this, this process has not been truly consultative. Right. So uh, one of the claims I think that uh, at least Kai's side supporters definitely, definitely are making, I'm not sure if he's made it himself, is this is sort of meant to address the chaos that prevailed in the previous years, you know, when there were multiple governments, there was no political stability, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, on the other hand, of course, opponents are saying that this is basically a return back to the time of uh, Zain Labdin Ben Ali, you know, the kind of executive presidency that's there. So, uh, how, do, how does it seem when, when you look at some of the provisions in the document, what really does it uh, put in, so to speak? 
Yeah, I think even some of uh, Kai Sai's opponents, uh, I think, will readily admit that the, uh, under the previous system, there were certainly problems. What we saw was that the sort of divided executive between an elected president and an unelected prime minister uh, created quite a few problems, particularly when there was quite a lot of division within the parliament, extremely fragmented. There hadn't been a, a real barrier for party entry. So there was multiple parties um, and people switching parties quite easily as well. Um, that really opened uh, uh, the door to accusations of uh, uh, um, cronyism, corruption, uh, buying people off. Um, we also saw that there was, um, in, in fact, uh, the way that the sort of uh, elite consensus making worked often meant that, uh, uh, particularly on economic issues, we saw sort of uh, an automatic sort of neoliberal uh, 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 status quo continuing, whether that was uh, sort of accepting some of the sort of uh, conditions of the IMF and the World Bank towards greater privatization and austerity without really any debate on that. Um, you know, several other things that, that uh, people were, were very upset with, particularly, for example, the, during the COVID crisis, we saw a, a very uh, um, inept, at the very least, response uh, by the previous uh, parliamentary system to uh, the COVID crisis. Now, that said, uh, it's, it's clear that uh, Kai Said has taken the constitution to the complete opposite direction of a, of a highly centralized uh, presidential system with very few checks and balances. Uh, uh, there are no guarantees of independent, um, some of the independent uh, uh, state bodies uh, that previously had been assured uh, by the constitution, whether that's the um, higher electoral board or whether that's a, um, an anti-corruption uh, authority. Um, even uh, uh, there's question marks over um, the regulatory of uh, a board for uh, broadcasting um, in, in, in media. And so these are certainly some, some concerns that, uh, that people have. Um, you know, it's also at, at the moment, I can tell you that the, the, the debate over uh, uh, the referendum is, is, is for them, people who are supporting it um, really are not sort of supporting it on the merits of the constitution. They're supporting it either um, as a way to sort of say that we don't want to go back to um, rule under a parliamentary system where the, the main party, the biggest party was the Anahta Islamist party, or they're just saying we want to basically give a vote of confidence to President Kai Syed, uh, but really not, uh, not engaging with the, uh, the substance of the constitution. Right. I believe as far as the judges are concerned, for instance, there are restrictions on them striking as well. That seems to have come after the recent protests also. Sure. Yeah. The uh, president had made uh, several steps over the last year to, to really uh, uh, make sure that the judiciary is further under uh, executive control. Uh, this is the effect of, of the steps he was taking. Now, he had said that this was because he had wanted to, to root out corruption in the judiciary, uh, but judges felt that they were um, really seeing executive interference in a way that was uh, cutting down their independence from the executive branch. Um, and, and the Constitution seems to, to basically uh, uh, solidify this uh, into, a, in, into a, a constitutional form as well. Right. Uh, one other question, of course, you raised the issue of the neoliberal austerity policies, which, you know, the previous governments and the previous elite were taking. But has any of that reversed under Kais Said, which would actually lead to any kind of substantial change? Or has he really continued down that path? No, for the moment, no. In fact, um, uh, his major economic policy so far has been uh, to offer amnesty to, to business people. Now, this is something that uh, uh, people had, had fought back very strongly against. Um, there was an amnesty bill uh, after the revolution in 2011 that took many years. Uh, to, it was finally passed, but uh, activists who had pushed back against it had, had basically succeeded in limiting it to, to amnesty only for corrupt officials of the Ben Ali era, but not for corrupt businessmen. Um, and the president basically extended amnesty uh, in the hopes that this would uh, convince these businessmen to, to, to bring uh, money back in in the form of investment. Right. Now, it's, it's really not clear that that's, that's the case. It's not clear that there's any sort of uh, transparency or accountability in terms of actually uh, tracking that wealth. He's made a few sort of, uh, um, let's say, uh, at the rhetoric level, um, um, payons to uh, tracking down illicit capital flow that has gone out of the country to uh, a debt audit, but he hasn't taken any substantive steps. And in the meantime, he's uh, continuing negotiations with the IMF for a new uh, loan of something like $4 billion, uh, which, um, you know, in many cases, we're hearing people say there, there really is no alternative. Even, even people who are very critical of the IMF are saying that Tunisia is, at the moment, unless unless there's significant um, debt forgiveness, um, unless there's, there's really a, a, um, 
uh, a, 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 a very strong steps towards economic, uh, sorry, energy and uh, food sovereignty. Uh, there really isn't an alternative at this current moment to a new IMF loan, but it doesn't seem that the, the president has, has really tried to, to, to offer alternatives that are, that are really substantive to, to the way that Tunisia was going before economically. Right, Father, and of course, uh, too early to predict, I mean, I don't know, maybe too early to predict the outcome, but after the referendum, what really happens? What are the possibilities? It's a bit unclear. There's uh, between the people who are against um, the, the new constitution, there's a big split between people who are going to boycott because they see it as illegit illegitimate and they feel that no matter what the outcome, the president will uh, institute the constitution regardless of, of the referendum results, as seen in, in actually one of the, 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 the articles of the constitution. It says that regardless of the referendum results, it does not say that if there's a yes, that the constitution will come into force. It just right. says that the constitution will come into force on the 25th. So there's people who are boycotting and there's people who are saying no. So it's divided between those two. At the same time, you know, it would, it's, it's, it's not clear whether that will uh, be significant enough to either uh, lower the legitimacy of the uh, results on the 25th or enough to actually say no. Um, but in either case, it does seem like the president is, is really set on getting this constitution passed. Right. And after that, I believe then there's going to be a fresh round of elections somewhere in December. Is that the plan? This is what the president has uh, uh, committed to. Um, that would be elections uh, most likely for uh, parliament um, and this new uh, sort of legislative body. He's, he's creating a bicameral uh, parliamentary body that uh, has some sort of local uh, uh, element to it. Uh, but it doesn't seem that that's going to be presidential elections. It may just be uh, parliamentary elections for what will be a much weaker parliament than the current parliament or the, the previous parliament, let's say. Thank you so much, Fadil, for talking to us and giving us some clarity on the processes that are going on in Tunisia right now. We'll see what happens on the 25th and hopefully talk to you after that as well. My pleasure. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.